So this is neat. Uh, these mummies, mm -hmm. and from all different eras. Yes. It's not just Egyptian mummies, not just wrapped up. And, and from all over the world, right? All kinds of different people. Yeah. Arizona Science Center, that's where Corey is. Hey, buddy. Yeah, and good morning, you guys. Uh, this is one of the most fascinating exhibits I think the Science Center has ever uh, hosted. It is really something, and you're right, it's not all Egyptian, but uh, a combination of... Uh, dry air and a particular environment can also uh, have the same effects on the human body that uh, that Egyptian mummification process might have had. And uh, Sari Custer is with us. So we join you every time we come to the Science Center. Love your enthusiasm for all things scientific. This is one of the most fascinating of your exhibits, part, the most fascinating part, I think. This couple, not a couple, they were related, but um, in the 1600s? Yes, so the Baron and the Baroness. Uh, and they're not quite sure how they're related, but uh, that's what science is trying to tell us. They've been doing DNA testing on these particular mummies and also with the current Baron uh, to see what the relationships were. Uh, they're also evaluating the mummies. They both had back problems, and the current Baron apparently has back problems. So um, telling a, a, a genetic story here as well. So they, these two died in the 1600s, early 1600s uh, perhaps, um, and then were discovered in their own home uh, 200 years later, uh, in the early 1800s? Yes, so discovered in a crypt at the bottom of the castle. They had taken refuge in the castle during the Thirty Years' War, so you're correct, in the 1600s. Mm -hmm. And you can, um, you, you nailed it, actually, at the beginning. They were preserved through um, it, cool air blowing through the crypt, and it just happened to mummify the body. So um, you can see what great condition they're in. Even the Baron here was buried um, in these special boots, um, and those were even preserved. Apparently, they feel like butter still. The leather's still supple. Fascinating. And, yep, and we can tell they've never been worn. The heels are perfect. Um, and from what the story goes, apparently uh, they had silver buckles that may have been pillaged by Napoleon's army uh, hmm. for ammunition. So uh, there's just more and more story that we're uncovering uh, yeah. for these people. Well, I'm privileged to have just heard you uh, talking about the current Baroness uh, who is in uh, Munich right now. She has learned that her ancestors are on display here and she would like to come and visit. That's fascinating. Yes, that's what we've heard, and we would love to have her uh, come visit. It is absolutely incredible to be able to tell that story from uh, individuals who lived hundreds of years ago um, to their ancestors today. Wow, and I see it's not just people, <laughs> but right. we've got uh, animals, some I suppose preserved intentionally, others accidentally, like this cat, uh, and I love, I could stand all day. I'm the kind of guy in a museum, I read every word oh, okay. of every exhibit. So that's fun for me. But this cat probably trapped in the building when it was built in the what, 1700s, I think I read. Actually, so all the animals are about 100 years old. Um, so not as old as maybe our Baron and Baroness. Mm -hmm. Um, but all have their own unique story, and all of these preserved um, naturally as well, mm -hmm. as opposed to that um, artificial or cultural mummification that we talked about. Um, but all have their unique stories, and this is, I mean, the largest collection of mummies ever assembled, so you have a chance to see a little bit of everything from the animals to the people and to hear the stories behind all of them. You, you caught the, the cat story. Yeah, here, well, it's, it's sobering and somber and fascinating and spooky and just interesting in every possible way from the these dried bodies preserved in that way to these bog bodies that we're seeing now and they fascinate me uh, as well. Anyway, we've got lots more to show you as the morning rolls on, uh, Troy and Celeste, and uh, we will find out when a body goes from being a mummy to just a corpse. Well, what's the break point on that? Like if, if the body has a Lakers jacket on. <laughs> That doesn't qualify, right? Well, it could, actually. Recent. Mummification is preservation of the soft tissue. So okay. uh, that would mean if somebody a month ago ended up having um, preserved tissue as well, okay. that would technically be a mummy. Although All a month right. might not be quite far enough yet. Yeah, well, okay. I like to know the rules. And anyway, well, more coming up uh, from the Science Center, you guys. And it's fascinating. Every step is something really, really cool. You must come. We'll see you again in a few minutes. It is pretty cool, don't you think? Like the whole idea of having them available. Your kids would learn so much from that. Yeah, who finds them? Like, who, who's the archaeologist that... And, yeah. 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 I got a bog body here. Oh, you better grab it. Or the cat? <laughs> cat. Right. What do we want to do with this dead cat? We'll keep it. Yeah. Put it in a museum. Well, Corey is checking out Mummies of the World, and now open to the public at the Arizona Science Center. Hey, Cor. Hey, good morning again, you guys. I could spend all day here. I love this. And if you have a youngster who's interested in history or... 
spooky things. I mean, it's all kind of wrapped in here. And we're always fascinated, Sari, uh, by these mummies. And this is what we sort of traditionally expect in a mummy, <laughs> yes. you know, from textbooks and so forth. But they come in all shapes they absolutely and do. All ages and sizes. And from all over the world. So mm. we, you're right. We think of Egypt. As soon as we say mummy, everybody goes to Egypt. And we do have those. Uh, we have these two fabulous mummies here, Nesmin and Nezhor. They were both priests about 2,500 years ago. Boy, I'm sorry beautiful. to interrupt, but just no. looking at the, at the work that obviously went into wrapping them. It's so tidy. It's obviously so much care was taken oh, yes. in doing it. And the Egyptians perfected their process over thousands of years. They did a fabulous job. They put a lot of care. And of course, the um, I guess the, the more prominent you were in society, the more mm -hmm. likely you were to have more time and money to invest or, or for people to invest in your mummification. Now, so. I understand the Egyptians were not first. They were not first. A lot of people don't know South American, uh, the Chinchero tribe, actually, started about 2,000 years before the Egyptians for intentionally mummifying their loved ones. Mm -hmm. um, now, this Burns collection that we're seeing now, this is special in its own way. What's happening it here? It is. So this is an anatomical collection from the late 1700s, early 1800s. Um, the individual that developed the preservation process for this collection um, was in his teens when he did it. He was the director of the medical school by the time he was 16. Wow. And it just really is a fascinating collection and no one knows how he uh, mummified those bodies. He didn't write the process down and scientists still can't quite figure out what the preservation process was. Boy. So. Well, people obviously still fascinated by it. Even in the modern era, we wonder how in the world did it happen? Someone not long ago gave it a whirl. That's right. The University of Maryland wanted to see what the process was from uh, the Egyptian times. They wanted to follow the whole process and they tried it out with Mumab here from beginning to end. Everything they can find, again, where a process wasn't written down word for word and they went to Egypt, got all of the materials straight from the source, um, and that was in 1994, and they've been watching the process ever since. Boy, well, we'll wrap things up by, and we're out of time now, but it's a very sobering and sad sort of a story here. An entire family, a husband and a wife and their little son, uh, mummified in their crypt and uh, uh, discovered in 1994, but they date from the mid-1700s. Uh, boy, uh, you must come. When are we open? Uh, give us the nuts and bolts as we wrap it up. So we just opened yesterday, but we're open every single day, 10 to 5, and we, the exhibition is available until September 2nd, and of course tickets are on sale now. Wow. Well, Celeste and Troy, you can meet uh, Veronica Orlovitz. She's here with her son and her husband and uh, I mean you'll spend you'll spend a couple of hours here you certainly can it's uh, it's a fascinating exhibit one of their best ever I think wow. see you again soon